Hi, my name is Rick Ford. I was Dandy, the New York Yankee mascot. Wait, did he say he was the Yankee mascot? A lot of people don't know the Yankees did have a mascot for a couple of years. But Dandy was the first costumed mascot ever for the New York Yankees. I didn't know about Dandy, and I lived in New York, and I didn't know about Dandy for many years. In 1979, the team of Bonnie Erickson and Wade Harrison created a mascot for the Yankees. He's rather pear-shaped. The, the mustache that we gave him, you can blow it out so he, was, he could get in your face. There was motion to the hat so it would spin. Rick Ford was a young actor when he first met the couple. They were very famous at the time. Bonnie had done a lot of Muppets, Miss Piggy and Fozzie Bear. I was thrilled to be in their presence. Bonnie and Wade had recently got started in a new venture. We had this very strange request to do a mascot. We first heard that the Phillies were coming because Jim Hansen was their first stop, and he said, I don't do those kinds of things now, but Bonnie Erickson is the person you should talk to. I knew they had built the Philly Fanatic, and that was huge. And I think uh, George Steinbrenner was interested in creating some sort of family entertainment. The Yankees asked for some sketches, and they went to meet the boss. We met George because we were invited up to make a presentation. Uh, to him with the drawings. Wade and I went up there and met with him, showed him the designs, and we went into his office. He looked at it, I think he liked the sketch, he seemed to. He was very pleasant. He, we did get into an argument about the blue. He had a little question about what he called Yankee blue, which is sort of navy, and um, Bonnie had a different opinion about that, and they went back and forth a little bit, and we ended up using Bonnie's color. <laughs> <laughs> but what to call the new mascot? I do remember how we found the name for Dandy. We had a poster made showing the character uh, as a takeoff on the American Express commercial, which was, do you know me? Do you know me? And we had put Dandy in there holding up what looked like a replica of an American Express card, which had um, entry forms in it for people to take, and they were put in places all over the city. And they picked what they called a unique name, Dandy. Go figure. But well, it makes sense, Yankee Doodle Dandy, sure, okay. Finally, they needed someone to bring Dandy to life. And they called me and said, how would you like to try out for the mascot for the New York Yankees? And I was flabbergasted, you know? I said, yeah. On June 27th, while the Yankees were out of town, the dandy made his first appearance in the mostly empty stadium. It happened to be the same day that Reggie Jackson and Goose Gossage was on the disabled list, but this day was just to show the costume to different people. You know, maybe George Steinbrenner's up in the up in the rafters. I get down to the field, and I'm coming up to Reggie Jackson and Goose Gossage. They looked at me, and they started laughing. And I hear uh, Reggie Jackson say to Gossage, he says, wait till Thurman gets a load of this guy. He looks just like him. The mascot looked a lot like Thurman Munson, who was their catcher at the time. Well, I have to tell you, I was not aware of who Thurman Munson was. My take was to go back to sort of uh, an original Yankee, a dyed-in-the-wool Yankee. And I went and did some research and looked at some of the original players and found that they had mustaches. Two weeks later in Seattle, an incident with the San Diego chicken would change Dandy's future. Now I'm getting this right from the chicken. I'm not getting it from, from anybody else. I mean, I, I mean, this is from Ted. He told me. The actor who played the San Diego chicken was heading to the kingdom to test out a new outfit. And behind him says, hey, I'm going to the kingdom too. Can I share a cab with you? And it turns out to be Ron Guidry. The Yankee pitcher was excited to hear who he was sharing a cab with. Guidry says, says, oh my gosh, I'm telling you, my wife is a big, huge fan of you. Can we do something tonight? She's watching the game back east. She'll have a, she'll, she'll get a real kick out of it. Why don't we do something? So the chicken says, I do a little thing with the pitcher. I put a little hex on the ball and everything. And I do a little voodoo and stuff. And, and why don't we do it? He goes, great. He says, what do you say? I come out in the third inning or so? And Gidry says, terrific, let's do it. And third inning comes around, but Pinella had just struck out and he was miffed at himself. So here comes the chicken to do his bit and the voodoo stuff. Pinella just lost his temper and he said, Right now, he's coming out to do this thing? Lou Pinello didn't know that Ron Guidry and the chicken had done this thing in the back of the cab. They had it planned. So they get in this huge fight over the whole thing and screaming and yelling. Well, the crowd 
loves it. They think it's part of the act. And then they find out as it goes on that Penella's really upset. Wade told me he had heard about the article about the chicken and there had been an argument. And George Steinbrenner said, those characters don't belong in the field. <laughs> and we went, he just shot himself in the foot. Because in a couple of days, I think, we were going to introduce our character up there uh, for him. Here it comes back to me. I'm supposed to be making my, my debut. And nothing. We were at the game. We never even saw him ourselves. He was relegated to the um, top part of the stadium. And then tragedy struck. And, and unfortunately, Clemmer Munson uh, died in a plane crash. Crashed on approach, 1,000 feet short of the runway at the Akron Kenton Airport in Ohio. It's just a shock, I just can't believe it. And now the person on the team who he looked like dies tragically in a plane crash. It was the beginning and the end for the Yankees mascot. They kept him in the upper deck, and he was there for a couple of years, but no one remembers him because, again, he was stuck in the upper deck. We decided that after three years, if they weren't going to be exploiting the, the personality and the character, that there wasn't much point. To be honest, we always wanted to do a character in New York. This is our town. Uh, we always felt that it was a place that uh, we could do something really fun, and that was a great opportunity, and I think uh, we were the victim of circumstances. Because it was so unique to the, to the Yankees, there was not any other team that we were going to have as a client that would be able to use it, so he was um, retired. But for Rick Ford, Dandy made one lasting contribution to his life. What Dandy led to is a very interesting story in itself. I had a little business card and it had a little picture of Dandy on it. And um, I took a young lady on a blind date. She was very attractive, I liked her very much. I gave her the card to keep in touch with her. And she looked at it and says, oh, this is a really cute card and this and that. She kept that for 20 years. And she was going through her shoebox and said, I wonder what this guy's doing. She decided to write a little note. She said, do you remember me? And I did remember her. We got in touch and um, we started dating again. And um, a year later, we got married. <laughs>